Now, when you're used to selling on the retailers, you're used to email marketing. MailChimp, Mailer, like that type of thing. You're used to your newsletter list and you probably have a lead magnet to get people onto your list. But don't make the mistake of thinking that the email list you use for the retailers has anything to do with the email list that you will use for e-commerce. Chalk and cheese, they're nothing alike. Do not make this mistake. People often say to me, should I bring my, you know, mail, MailChimp, whatever, list across to Shopify? And I usually scream, no, whatever you do, do not do that. So, so you, you can get an idea of why not. I'll explain what, for example, Clavio does. Some people might use OmniSend, but basically I will tell you about Clavio. It is specifically designed for e-commerce. So what does it do? It knows when the customer arrives in your store, what pages the customer looks at, the customer's buying behaviour, if any, where the customer has looked. It knows all about the customer and it keeps that information where you can see it. And even if the customer doesn't buy anything, Clavio will pick them up. And you can set up all sorts of amazing flows. Now, if you're used to, I'll oh, just for the sake of simplicity, call it retailer list rather than having to say mailer like MailChimp, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I will call these retailer newsletter lists. Okay. So what would you do with those? You would typically give a lead magnet. Someone would see the lead magnet in your book or on your website. They would sign up in the back of your book maybe, or on your website. And when they signed up, they would go to a landing page, maybe on your newsletter provider, and then you might put them into a welcome flow of, say, two or three emails, welcoming them, obviously. But that's where it would end until you sent them out a campaign email. Now, with Clavio, it can do all sorts of flows. For example, say somebody goes to your store lands on it, looks at a page for a bit, doesn't buy, maybe someone's calling them, maybe they're distracted, for whatever reason they don't buy. Guess what happens? Of course you have to set this up, the magic fairies don't do it for you. You set it up in the first place but then it's all automatic. This person receives a browse abandonment email, something like, you know, hey I saw you were watching, etc, etc, and encourages them to buy. Now, another thing, say they've added it to cart, but they haven't gone as far as checkout. Clavio will send them an abandoned cart email. Or if they've started checkout but haven't gone through with it, Clavio will send them an abandoned checkout email. Don't confuse abandoned cart and abandoned checkout email because plenty of people do confuse them, but don't. So they're typically, you can also have welcome obviously you'd have a welcome sequence you can also have a win back sequence if the buyer has bought from you at one point and hasn't returned to buy from you again then you can send them out a win back flow and in good news you all know about scrubbing lists because you know about that for your retail newsletter list but you can put this person with clavio into a sunset flow so if the win back flow doesn't get them back the sunset flow might, and if it doesn't, goodbye, they're on their way and you don't have to pay for them anymore. It's a win-win situation for you. But you'd be surprised how many people do purchase and come back to your store in the sunset flow. Now, if you try to make one of your retailer newsletter lists work in e-commerce, you're putting a square peg in a round hole and it's just not really, it's not going to work. And don't fall for the sunk cost fallacy which is like, have we all had a partner at one point and then we think we want to dump them, but we think, oh no, you know, put too much time into them, blah, blah, blah. That's an example of sunk cost fallacy. Or it's like someone's put, say someone's put a lot of work into WooCommerce and they want to go to Shopify. They know Shopify is going to be better for them, but they might have already paid for 
another store, say for a year, and they think, oh, I can't go to Shopify because I've already paid for this other website for a year, even though Shopify will make me more money, I can't do it because I don't want to waste the money I've already spent, even though I will lose money in the long run. That is sunk cost fallacy. Don't fall for sunk cost fallacy. Don't think, okay, you've paid a lot for your retailer list. You know, keep that, keep two lists going, seriously, because there are some people that will never buy from your store. They're always going to buy from a retailer. Nothing you do will make them buy from your store. So keep that list for your retail people. You do not want these retail people on your Shopify store because it is going to completely stuff up your data. You only want buyers on your store. And that leads me to tell you about a story my father used to tell me when I was a child. I thought it was a horribly boring story at the time, but I always think of mail lists when I think of this story. Now, the story goes, and I know there are many iterations of this, but this is the one my father told me. The father was annoyed because he had a son who was irritatingly positive. And so he thought, I'll fix this child. The child was a super optimist. So for Christmas, under the tree, he put a large bag of horse manure. And he thought that'll teach the little guy. But the son was extremely excited. And he said to the son, why are you so happy I've given you a bag of horse manure for Christmas? And the son said, because that means there's a pony here somewhere. And that's the moral of the story. Newsletter lists, retailer newsletter lists are seeing a pile of horse manure and thinking there's a pony there somewhere. There might not be a pony there. Let me explain. So many people have said to me, oh, I have a list of 100,000. I have a list of 50,000. And I say, how many are buyers? And they go, well, how would I know they're buying from the retailers? They, these people don't mind paying a fortune to the newsletter list providers for these people who might or might not buy. But on the other hand, when you have Clavio or an email newsletter provider, you know exactly who's bought. You know exactly how much campaign has, how Clavio has made you in each campaign because it's there in black and white in front of you. You just have to log into your dashboard and look and it will have X amount of dollars made from this campaign, X amount of dollars made from this flow. All your flows will be listed and there'll be a nice dollar amount next to them. So there you go. But how would you know if you're on the retailers? Well, say you send out a list and suddenly your ranking improves or your sales go up. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that the newsletter was responsible for this. But how many people actually did buy from you on your list? And that's what I mean about the bag of horse manure for Christmas. It's a wishful thinking. It's like wanting to win the lottery. It's like wanting to go and pay the pokies. It's gambling, really. It's thinking, I'll have 100,000 people on my list. Maybe if I'm really lucky, 20 to 30 to 50 to 100 of these people will actually buy something. But with Clavio, you know exactly who is buying something. And if you scrub your retail newsletter provider list, you are scrubbing people who haven't opened, clicked in X amount of time. But what if they rarely click and they do buy? And what if Fred Blogs opens and clicks every single time but doesn't buy a single thing? Fred Blogs will stay on your list. The other people will be out in their ear. But with Clavio and e-commerce, you know exactly who has bought. You know exactly. While I think of it, before I forget smart sending with Clavio, you can turn on something called smart sending so that the person doesn't receive too many emails at once. It's good to know. And also Clavio does SMS marketing. Gosh, if I had a dollar for the every time someone has said to me, I don't like SMS marketing. I myself don't like SMS marketing. I scream and they send them to me in the middle of the night and I have my phone by my bed and it wakes me up, which they shouldn't legally do. But let's face it, people still do things that aren't legal. I don't like SMS marketing at all. It drives me mad, it really annoys me. But as I always say, I am not my customer. You are not your customer. And you can't send someone an SMS email unless they've opted in. So why would someone opt in to receive email? Well, I mean, I've just complained about them. I do get them, but they shouldn't have legally sent them to me in the first place. But 
the the people who opt into your list, you, you who are obeying the rules and the laws, if they opt into your SMS list, they want to get an SMS from you. It's not rocket science, is it? They're asking for it. Please send me an SMS. So why are you saying you don't like hassling people? They've signed up, for goodness sake. They've signed up to get SMSs from you. Now, SMS marketing has a very high open rate. I could tell you how much if my coffee machine hadn't broken down yesterday and I'm still under caffeinated. I used to remember these things, but because my caffeine levels have been dangerously low, even though I had substitutes, I just can't think at the moment, but very high, a very high open rate. SMS marketing, and they're usually opened very quickly. They just don't sit around like emails where someone might see them, they might not, it might go to their promotions folder, it might, you know, you just don't know. But with SMS, they get it fast and they tend to act fast. Obviously, you don't send them a long campaign and say, my dog, I bought a new raincoat for my dog. I took her for a walk, blah, blah, blah. You don't, you're not chatty. Like you, if you are chatty anyway on your e-commerce, on your retail email list, you wouldn't be like that on your SMS, obviously. You'd say, you know, deal 10% off or something like that, something or new release, blah, 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 something like that. But it's brief and to the point, but SMS marketing makes you a lot of money. It makes you a huge amount in proportion to your email list. Back to the subject of the email list. People often say, I don't want to keep two lists going. Well, tough. Do you want to make money? You've got to put in a bit of work. It's like wizards won't come and do it for you. The shoemaker elves won't come and make shoes for you. They're not going to do it. You're going to have to do the work. It's an e-commerce business. It needs work. Let's face it. So keep two lists running, one for the retailers, one for Clavio. I often say to them, I often try to encourage people on my retailer list and say, you know, if you'd like to come over, blah, blah, blah. Some of them do, some of them don't. But the thing is, never, never in a million years import your retailer newsletter list across to your e-commerce list because these people have not bought from your shop. You do not want people on your store e-commerce list that have not bought from you or at least engaged in some way on your store. You have to keep them separate. Your data will be a horrible hot mess. You won't make the money. It's just going to be a major disaster. I always say to people, it's hard to explain this when they don't know what e-commerce marketing is because it's one of those things that, like, I can't just tell you a whole lot of factoids and you'll go, right, I'll get it because it's something that you more learn by osmosis. You take it in by osmosis. So I'm hoping this does help. But resist the urge to import your list over to Clavio and please don't believe anything you'll hear about those lists working for e-commerce. Gosh, okay, don't, don't listen to that. No, they don't. So you've got to get something like Omnisend, uh, like Clavio. I recommend it. I love it. And it makes me money. And that's another thing. People often say, I know Clavio has a free plan, but I don't want to pay for it. Do you want to make money? Someone goes and opens a brick and mortar store. Do they say, I'm not going to decorate this. I'm not going to do a shop fit out because I don't want to spend the money. It's exactly the same thing. It's a business. You have to invest in the business. Clevio has a rather generous free plan, and it's not like you've got a lead magnet out there getting people to your store, is it, where you're wanting numbers, numbers, numbers in the hopes that some will buy and thinking it's a numbers game. No, you save that for your retailer newsletter list. E-commerce marketing is nothing like that. It has nothing to do with that. The two are completely separate. They bear no resemblance to each other, really, apart from their dealing with emails. Keep them separate in your mind and keep them separate physically. Never import a list. They're not buyers. They're not buyers from your store. You don't want them on your store list. Now, as I said, Clovio has a rather generous free plan, but by the time you start paying for it, it's making you money. And as I also said, it will tell you how much money you make from each campaign how much money you make from each flow and it's usually listed in the most money you make so say your say your welcome flow was making more money than your abandoned cart flow it it will list them in sequence so you can see how much money you're making people don't have stores 
to donate to charities. It's like people have a store because they want to make money from it. People have stores because they want the stores to be profitable. So who on earth would get Clavio or anything like that if they thought they weren't going to make money from it? The whole point is to make a profit. Clavio used properly will make you a profit. And that's what you need. So I hope there's not been too much information in this. I will be putting out a book on Clavio soon, which I will also upload here for free. So you can listen to it for free. But for now, just take listen to this even a couple of times and take in what I'm saying to you. Clavio is for e-commerce. You could also use OmniSend or something like that. But Clavio is for e-commerce. Your retailer newsletter lists are for the retailers, are for readers you pick up on the retailers. You don't own those customers. You get them onto your list and you hope to send them stuff, sell them stuff with campaigns. And here's another thing. Save your free lead magnets for your retailer people. Never give a free anything to someone on your store unless, for example, you're running a $5,000 and upwards dollar course, $10,000, $20,000, dollars course. I know people who are running courses that start at $12,000, go up to over $100,000, and they charge a small amount for a lead magnet. Not saying everyone does, but just giving you an example, it's not always the dumb thing to make it free. But not for e-commerce. Don't do it when you're selling products. When you have an e-commerce store selling products, you don't use a free lead magnet like a book. You don't. No, you give them a, like an offer, say 10% off. Now, always think when you're looking at, when you're buying online, always look at the stores. See if you can see if it's a Shopify store. It's usually fairly obvious. And look at the offer. How long does it take before the pop-up comes? Does it pop up in your face as soon as you see it? That's usually not very good. But have a look and see what happens. And if you're left without buying, see if the store sends you a browse abandonment email. You can go, aha, uh -huh, I just got a browse abandonment email. Aha, uh -huh, I just got an abandoned cart email. And take note. Take note of what they say and how you react to them. It's very good in, for inspiration to see what other people do. But remember, lead magnets are for selling on the retailer newsletter list. They are not for e-commerce. You don't want freebie seekers in your store. It, for a start, it will stuff up your data. You want buyers and you want them now. You don't have the back of horse manure for Christmas mentality that maybe someday all these freeloaders on your list are going to buy from you. And just as a quick aside before I wrap up here, with my newsletter list, I had views. I was always scrubbing it like a maniac, scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. I think because I'm a clean freak, my mother was an antique dealer before she became a jeweler and I just like everything minimalist. But having grown up in a house full of creepy antiques, so that is probably why I overly scrubbed my list. But every time I send out a campaign about, gosh, a lot of people would email me and I would spend typically a whole day replying to their emails. So I don't type well, probably would have taken someone a quarter of the time, but I'd be typing away replying to all their emails. And then one day I thought I'd say to each person, which book of mine did you like the most? And they all replied and it was a free book I had on the retailers and I thought, uh-huh. So I replied to them and said, which book of mine did you last pay for? And you know what? Not one of those people had ever paid for a book. Not one. And I chatted to them to find out more. And then I sent out surveys. And I found out that the people who would email me every time I sent out a campaign, and they were very chatty, so every last one of them had only ever got a freebie from me. In my mind, because of the interaction, I was thinking they were biased. Now, this might not be you. This might not happen to you at all, but it did happen to me. And I thought it, it was very interesting. So don't think just because someone is very chatty with you and they're engaging with you that they're buying a lot of your stuff. And again, this was my newsletter list. If these people had been on my Clavio list, I would have known exactly what they bought. Now, before I go on to tell you quickly something else Clavio can do, you can segment people to the nth degree. It's incredibly precise. So say Fred Bloggs has bought two books in one of your series. 
you can send out an email to Fred Blocks and everyone else who's only bought two books and not anymore in that series, you can send out a campaign to this person. That's what I mean. It's so segmented. Say you're advertising a five, six ebook bundle. You can set up a special flow just for those people and you can exclude them once they buy anything else. But for example, you could then set up a flow where you tell the next time you tell them the next book or bundle in the series and so on and recommend another series and you can have it set up so it opts out once they buy these other products it's amazing what you can do it really works for you and it works for you to make a lot of money and of course you can't do that on the retailers because you don't own the customer and another thing you can do with flow so it will save you a lot of time you could set up a flow that could last for a year you could set up every email to go say one five days, one six days, one seven back to five. You could vary it a little because you don't really know when that person will be home. But so they could receive when they subscribe a welcome. They go into the welcome flow. And most of these are say three to five emails long, but you could make it a hundred emails long. And you could tell them maybe you could give them some information about another series you have or say paperbacks, hardcovers whatever whatever you do but you can keep selling to them chatting to them however your branding is for you but you can keep this going so you can set up a long flow where it could go for a year or two where you keep emailing this person in the flow and once you set it up that's it it's automatic and you can exclude people once they've bought certain books if you wish and it's a wonderful way to save yourself time Say you're someone who is hopeless at sending out campaigns and you know you should be sending out X amount a month, but you just, you know, you just can't get around to it. So if you do that, this is a wonderful way to make sure this is all working automatically for you. And when you do send out a campaign, you can put smart sending on it if you don't want them to get like two at once. But that usually wouldn't matter because if you are sending out a campaign, then it would be about a new release and people would be happy, surely to get if they're still on your list by this time they'd be happy to get a new release notification okay so that's all for now i hope you have enjoyed this please like and subscribe bye for now